All right, so today we're going to take a look at core tiles, what exactly they are, and how we can work with them uh, within the framework of data. All right, so firstly, what are core tiles? Well, core tiles are used to divide data into four equal parts. Okay, the whole idea with core tiles is that it's an extension of your measures of central tendency specifically your median. Your median is actually one of your core tiles. Now, to divide something into four parts, you're going to have three core tiles, but we're going to look at that in a moment. Right, to really use core tiles properly, we also need to look for something called the interquartile range. Now, this gives us an idea of how spread the data is around the median, okay, and it gives us an opportunity to comment on the skewness of the data or how well it is grouped around the medium. Now, I want to take a look at an example of quartiles so that it gives us an idea of how we're going to break these up. So, you can see I have a string of numbers here. If we take note of how many numbers we have, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 numbers in total. All right, so this is an odd number. The very first thing that I'd like to do is find the median of the data. Since I have 17 numbers here, that means I need to find the number that is in the middle. So, 17, halfway through uh, would be the number 9, which is funny enough, the position 9 here as well for me. If I look in, on either side of this number 9, I have 8 numbers before it and 8 numbers after it, which means that I have found the number precisely in the middle. This is my median. My median is actually referred to as Q2. Alright, this is quartile 2, and it divides our data in half. Okay, so 50% of the data is below 9, and 50% of the data is above 9 at this point. Next, I want to look out for quartile 1. Now, since I have 8 data points, finding halfway through, that means I've got an even number. So, I'm going to have to take two numbers on either side. You'll notice that on either side of my little red block that I've put in there now, I've got three numbers on either side of those. Okay, That means that my quartile number 1 will lie in between the values 6 and 7. So what I need to do is take the values of 6 and 7, add them together, and divide the result by 2 to get quartile 1 of 6,5. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for my quartile 3. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to look at those 8 numbers, find the middle 2 of them, which is 13 and 14 together, and I'm going to use the same treatment. I'm going to add those two numbers together and divide them by 2, which will give me an answer of 13 and a half. All right, so I found my quartiles. That tells me that below a value of 6.5 will be 25% of my data. Above 6.5 is 75% of my data. Okay, below 9 is 50%, above 9 is 50% of my data. Okay, and then if I look at the top, quartile, my 75th quartile, my upper quartile, as it's sometimes referred to, all right, my upper quartile has 25% of, if these were marks in a test, 25% of the learners got marks above 13 and a half, and 75% of the learners got below 13 and a half. Okay, so that's the one example. So the other thing is we're going to look for the interquartile range. So how spread is this data? If I looked at my normal range here, 17 minus 3 it would give me a value of 14. So it's a fairly large range for marks in a class. If I looked at my interquartile range, I have 13.5 minus 6.5. So I subtract my two quartiles from each other, my upper quartile from my lower quartile, and that gives me a range of 8. Okay, so that tells me that my data is still pretty fairly spread amongst um, itself. Okay, so it's quite spread out around my median there. I'm going to take a look at another example here with a different set of numbers. Here we'll go 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So now I have an even number of results. That means if I want to find my median, my Q2, I need to find the middle two numbers so that it goes 5 and 5 on either side, which, funny enough, would encompass the fives in the middle. If you go and look on either side there, outside of the blocks, I have four numbers below that block and four numbers above that block. So my quartile actually lies in between those two numbers. Fairly simple situation here. Five and five added together, divided by two, gives me five. All right. Then I can take a look at my Q1. So I have five numbers below. All right. So I'm going to, because I had to include the five in that block, I'm going to need two numbers below and two numbers above here. Okay. So it means those two numbers will be included there as my um, numbers to be used. So I'm going to add those two together and get three and a half as my quartile. And in the same situation, what I'm going to do on the top for my upper quartile, I'm going to find those numbers there because I'm including the five in the situation. Because remember, my median, my middle quartile, my Q2 is sitting between the two fives. So I'll have five and seven before my block and 11 and 15 after my block. So it'll align between my eight and nine. If I add them together and divide them by two, I get eight and a half. Once again, I need to look at my interquartile range. I just take those two numbers, my upper quartile minus my lower quartile, okay, Q3 minus Q1, and that gives me my interquartile range of five. So once again, dot is fairly well spread around my median. All right, so those are just two little examples with how to do that calculation, all right? Now, we also need to look at what else this can tell us, all right? So, we can show the information with a box and whisker plot. This also helps us see the skewness of the data. This data is right skewed or left skewed to the, to the thing. So if we take a look at what I've drawn here, I've taken my lowest value, which was two, and my highest value, which was 15. So that's where my two whiskers start and finish. Then the box starts at three and a half, which was my lower quartile. My median is the line in the middle, and my upper quartile is eight and a half, and so is the top part of that box. And you'll see that most of the data is sitting low down, okay? And so the data is right skewed, okay? Because we have a long tail going off to the right-hand side. Now, I've used some words here, okay? So let's just make sure that you understand what exactly this all means when I'm talking about upper and lower, etc., and how to read this more clearly, okay? So once again, here's my little box, just a general one now. I don't have any numbers on it. To, if we look, we start off with our lowest value, where we start the little whisker. We put in our lower quartile, right? That's the start of the little box. Our median sits in the middle. That line can be anywhere in between, depending on where it is according to the scale. My upper quartile is the top of my box, and my highest value is going to be the top of that whisker. And then we've got a scale bar at the bottom that just gives us an idea of how to read off specific values for these things. So, when I was talking about skewness, I said data can be said to be skewed left, right, or symmetrical, which is not at all, so that there is nothing. So, looking at these three examples, the first one, my median is closer to my third quartile, which is my upper quartile, and so it's skewed to the left, because the long sort of arm of the uh, box is sticking towards the left, okay? It's a long tail. There's no skew in the where the median's in the center, all right? It's perfectly even between the two, so you can't say if it's leaning left or right. It's perfectly centered, so it's no skew. It's a symmetric one, or symmetrical. And then if my median is close to my first quartile, it's said to be right skewed, because everything's leaning off and sort of stretching off to the right where our data is stretched out there. Okay, 
So you will notice that the size of the box between Q2 and the other two quartiles determines which one this is. The bigger the box is on the left, makes it, if the bigger box is on the left-hand side, it's left skewed. If the bigger box is on the right-hand side, then it's right skewed. All right. So just to summarize all of this, quartiles are used to break my data up into uh, four pieces. All right. So there are three of them that exist. And when we are dealing with that, we're going to be having our lower quartile, which is 25% of the data between our quartile two, uh, one and two is going to be 25% of the data between Q quartile two and three is 25% of my data and between quartile three and the upper or well, uh, the highest number is also 25% of the data so that these things are cut into quarters and you can see where there's a bigger concentration of data where 25% or 50% of the data is sitting. Okay, so hopefully that keeps it all nice and clear for you, and I hope that you keep safe. Thank you.